welcome to Thursdays Between the Headlines. I'm Ruiz Wang Obongwana, and this is the program where we zoom in on a few stories that have caught our attention here at Press TV. We're coming to you live from London, and here in the studio to help me tease out what's between the headlines tonight are Ken O'Keefe, a Gulf War veteran and human rights activist, and Piroz Mocha Hadzadeh, an academic. A warm welcome to you both. Thank you. President Obama and his new Secretary of State Hillary Clinton are at the heart of what could be a new era for international relations. Key to President Obama's new international strategy is healing the rift with the Islamic Republic of Iran. Today, The Guardian's front page reveals some details of a draft letter to be sent directly to the Iranian people, courtesy of their Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. The Guardian's diplomatic editor outlines why he thinks that this softer spoken US administration may, as he puts it, terrify Iran. With an estimated 1,300 dead and well over 5,000 Palestinians injured in Gaza, one of Israel's key conditions for ending the blockade is the release of just one Israeli soldier. Despite the official ceasefire, we hear today that Israel has renewed its airstrike on the Gaza Strip, injuring 18 Gazans, including 11 schoolchildren and a Hamas policeman. Plus, two days after Holocaust Day, the specter of Holocaust denial raises its head, with Israel cutting ties with the Vatican. What will Israel achieve by breaking ties with the Pope? Please feel free to let us know what you think via text SMS at plus four four seven eight double oh double oh eight oh eight six or you can email us at bth at pressTV.co.uk. Well, gentlemen, uh, the US relations with Iran still captivating people's imagination across the globe. And before we get into the discussion, let's have a look at today's front page of The Guardian. And it's being put on the front page, and they haven't said exclusive, but there seems to be an implication that it is, because I haven't seen it in any of the other papers. And the headline is, Revealed, the letter Obama team hope will heal Iran rift. Symbolic gesture gives assurances that U.S. does not want to topple the Islamic regime. I mean, what, what's your first thinking when you see a headline like that splattered across quite a liberal paper in The Guardian? I mean, are you optimistic? Well, I, I think that U.S. policy is never what it uh, appears to be in the public eye. Uh, what they're truly intending to do is, is hard to know for sure, but ultimately uh, I think the Iranians are correct in uh, pointing out that Saddam Hussein in fact disarmed, and uh, after he disarmed, what was his reward for that other than an execution, an invasion of Iraq and the killing of probably a million or more refugees and the millions as well. Um, there's a valid argument to uh, to, to make and that uh, the best defense for Iran would be to find the weapons that seem to be preventative. Uh, why didn't the U.S. invade or uh, topple North Korea? I mm. would argue that it's because they can actually fight back. Yes. Um, at the same time, I'm for disarmament and clearly if any nation should be disarming, it should be the nation that has most of the weapons of mass destruction and clearly that's the United States. Right, right. And is it the case, um, Piroz, that um, Israel in particular kind of precipitated the beginning of a sort of fear of nuclear um, danger in the area by creating nuclear power in the first place, which hasn't been questioned by and, the American not, regime not at all? Not only that, but it is Israel who has created this fear in the hearts and minds of the Americans that everybody in the Middle East is up to uh, creating or building nuclear arms to hit Israel. Mm. Whereas the reality is that it's only Israel who has more than 200 warheads, nuclear warheads there. And actually, in, on one occasion, at least I heard for myself, the Israeli war minister, instead of <laughs> defense minister, threatened Iran with nuclear weapon, mm. uh, in one occasion at least, on Persian language, the war minister, previous one, being uh, Iranian origin himself, mm. spoke very well Persian, and he said on Persian language, Israeli radio, that his country would use nuclear weapon on Iran. Yeah. No, and the reason, only, yeah. I, want, I want to bring in Kenya, there is a concern of, uh, that I'm reading from, um, from Iranian courses that Israel could just, you know, go it alone and pretty much do what it wants and attack Iran direct and they have the nuclear capability to do that. Well, I, I think Israeli actions over the decades make clear that they're very dangerous, unpredictable, willing to use weapons that are clearly a violation of international law. They're willing to endure huge uh, publicity uh, problems in, in the use of these weapons. 
Um, and it's clear they're very dangerous. So I would say Iran mm. is, is justified mm. in being uh, fearful of such an attack. And the, the U.S. set the precedent really quite clearly with the uh, preemptive policy of invading Iraq. Now, Iraq did what it was supposed to do, and it was punished very seriously. And if we look at the policy of Israel with regard to this latest invasion and ultimately slaughter of uh, innocent Palestinians, we see that uh, having no weapons is in no way a defense for any mm -hmm. nation when dealing with, e with uh, Israel. So yes. uh, the Iranians have every right to be concerned. And, and some of the speculations, because I must admit there are speculations in this article, because no official letter has been revealed. Uh, one of the draft proposals is suggesting that Iran should compare its relatively low standard of living with that of some of its more prosperous neighbors and contemplate the benefits of losing its pariah status in the West. What do you think of that, Piruz, as an Iranian? Is it going to be part of the letter? Uh, uh, this is speculation. Oh, uh, uh, speculation. Yes. That is, uh, I, I think I, it's I, official. I, I wish these people would stop speculating on the things which really uh, is not known precisely. What is known for the fact is that Obama has promised the Americans, first of all, and then the world that he is going to put an end to George Bush's uh, gunboat diplomacy in the Middle East and warring everybody, uh, hating everybody, bombing everybody. He promised, he promised the Americans to begin with and the rest of the world that he is going to put an end to it. I wish these British newspapers would stop uh, mm. speculating in a way that would mm. change, make the man to change his mind. Right, right. But it, <laughs> the, the, the assumptions in this, you know, I mean, as, as though that's going to have some kind of uh, leverage with the Iranian um, administration, you know, the, the concern about the relatively, what they call a relatively low standard of living compared to the prosperous neighbors. Which one? And, and Iraq? Losing the, well, exactly, Syria? Exactly. <laughs> Egypt? Yeah. And of course, Jordan? How, how concerned yeah. do you think about. America's about, friends? How, how concerned do you think <laughs> the Iranians are about, as this article calls it, the pariah state? In the, its pariah state in the West. Israel is not pariah state. Okay, no, you go. But <laughs> they're calling Iran of a course. pariah state, of we course. Understand. And how concerned do you think the Iranians will be about how the West perceive them? Well, I think that they have some need to be uh, sensitive to the perceptions of people in the West because uh, clearly we can have some impact on the policies of our governments. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, uh, large numbers of people protesting, signing petitions, and all of this doesn't do much to, to stop our governments from conducting policies that amount to mass murder. Um, I, I think that the, the, the notion that uh, if Iran simply uh, you know, uh, deals with the U.S. in the way that it wants, if it capitulates to U.S. Uh, uh, demands that somehow the people of Iran will benefit is a farce. Uh, we mm -hmm. see it time and time again uh, when uh, you have capitulating governments such as uh, Mubarak in Egypt. I don't see uh, the people of Egypt uh, benefiting greatly because of this uh, basically uh, lapdog status of their uh, leader. So I, I don't yes. see why that the Iranians would think that somehow uh, all of the people of Iran are going to benefit because they capitulate the U.S. policy. Right, right. And I just find it interesting, Piru, to read that in The Guardian. To me, it almost seems uh, somewhat naive and lacking in information about Indeed, yes. what Iranians really think. Let's Indeed. move on again because The they Guardian... Did.